Hi, I'm Robert Werner and welcome to our first video blog of DARE, Delft Aerospace Rocket Engineering. We are more than 100 students and they are bachelors and masters at TU Delft and together we share the dream of reaching space. We design, build and launch our own rockets and in the coming video blogs you're going to get some insights in our work on our journey to space. The current altitude record for a rocket built by students and amateurs in Europe is 12.3 kilometers, which has been set up by us in 2009 with the launch of Stratos 1 in Sweden. But a spaceflight is all about reaching beyond. This year we're going big. In October we will launch our most powerful rocket so far, Stratos 2 Plus, to an altitude of 50 kilometers that's halfway to space. But more on this later. So, how are we going to achieve this? To streamline our efforts, we divided ourselves into nine technical teams that individually work on different aspects of spaceflight. Examples are Advanced Control, Stratus 2 Plus, a scientific ballooning team, a team dedicated to electronics, and one team each for solid, hybrid, and liquid propulsion. Now, in this first video blog, we will focus on the brain of a rocket, electronics, and advanced control. Have fun, guys. The electronics team collaborates with other teams within there to help them design reliable and safe electronics for their rockets. Since rockets can be very dangerous, we created the launch box to launch them from a safe distance. The launch box can measure wind speed so the safety officer knows uh, what kind of weather um, yeah, there is at the launch pad. Uh, we also uh, integrated uh, communication with the rocket to, to see what the status of the rocket actually is from a long distance. The rocket in itself doesn't necessarily need electronics to be launched, but it surely needs electronics to land safely. The electronics can deploy the parachute and have the rocket landed uh, in a pretty slow speed, so it doesn't uh, get damaged. We also like to do some more than only deploying this parachute. For example, we, uh, we want to do measurements during flight and record the data of, uh, for example, the speed and the uh, uh, direction the rocket is going. Uh, to have some better insight in what we are doing, we also uh, send the data down to a ground station so we can see what the rocket is doing at that particular moment. One of the teams we collaborate a lot with is the Advanced Control Team. They uh, require a system that collects lots of data to be able to stabilize the rocket. So the Advanced Control Team is the first team within there which is making an active stabilization system for sounding rockets. So currently all the rockets within there are passively stabilized, which means that the fin size and the location of the rocket is balanced in such a way that the rocket turns into the wind once it's launched. And because of this, at uh, severe crosswinds, you decrease your maximum altitude. And furthermore, you increase uh, the ground distance which you travel because due to the side force of the wind, you diverge. And the advanced control team is um, developed in such a way that we design a system which fix all these problems. So eventually you can reach higher altitudes and you control your rocket into the direction that you want it to go. The advanced control team started with the minor of DARE in 2013, where 12 engineering students of the faculties of aerospace engineering, mechanical engineering and electrical engineering sat together and they designed a stability augmentation system for the sounding rocket of DARE within six months full time of work. And the result of that minor is that we uh, developed the actual hardware of the system. So what we did is we took an existing rocket of DARE and we included our own uh, stability augmentation system in it, which consists uh, is a module which has four canards, so it's like tiny little fins uh, mounted on top of the rocket. And in that module there are sensors such as gyroscopes, accelerometers, which measure the attitude of the rocket and then the control software on board of that module uh, ensures that there is a signal sent to the canards which then correct the flight path of the rocket. 
And at the end of the six months of the miner, we saw that the project was not finished. And then those guys uh, continued with the advanced control team to further develop the system. In August of 2014, the advanced control team successfully performed a wind tunnel experiment at the uh, low speed wind tunnel of the aerodynamics lab at the TU Delft. And in that experiment, um, we mounted the rocket inside the wind tunnel and with a joystick we could manually operate the deflection of the canards and we, that we succeeded in controlling the rocket, uh, rocket's flight attitude with respect to the incoming airflow. In 2015 the advanced control team already performed two launches, one in June and one in May. And during those two launches we did a flight test with the uh, control module, which includes the, uh, the sensors and the control software of the rocket, uh, which would go eventually fly uh, in November of this year. So in November we will launch the actual actively stabilized rocket. But before that, we want to be really sure that those sensors uh, work in a proper way. And during the flights of this year, we saved the data of those sensors onto a black box. It's like a small SD card. And that black box is based on the design of the black box, which is also uh, mounted in the Stratos rocket. So after we have conducted the launch of November, we successfully uh, tested this stability augmentation system. And in the future of the advanced control team, we would like to ensure that all rockets of there are able to be actively stabilized. So the ultimate goal is to have our system implemented in a rocket of there which would go into space safely and in a stabilized manner. So let's talk about the Stratos 2 Plus rocket. As I mentioned before, this is the follow-up project of Stratos 1 and is aimed to fly to a new record of 50 kilometers altitude. Moreover, it is also designed to carry a scientific payload aboard and safely return it to Earth. We're talking about a rocket of 6.5 meter length and a liftoff mass of 185 kilograms. The Stratos 2 Plus has a hybrid rocket M engine that can produce up to one ton of thrust. That is enough to accelerate your car from 0 to 100 kilometers per hour in 2.8 seconds. Our rocket will even reach the speed in less than half a second and max out at Mach 4.3. Try this with your car. We've split up the rocket between three main technical teams, the hybrid propulsion team, the capsule and recovery team, and the electronics team. In our series of video blogs, we'll introduce you to all teams. For now, let's take a look at the electronics team. The electronics of Stratos consists of uh, two major parts. One part is located directly above the engine and is uh, meant to control the engine and also to shut it down in case something goes wrong. And this is done by the uh, flight termination system. The other part is located uh, in, in the top of the rocket, in the capsule, and is uh, mainly meant to collect data and, uh, well, to send data down to the ground station, but most of all deploy the parachute at the right moment. The electronics have a lot of built-in redundancy. In case part of the electronics fail, uh, the complete system will still work as intended. An example of this is the, the voting system we use. There's uh, three boards that vote together when deploy the parachute. And at least two of these boards need to agree on deploying the parachute before the parachute actually deploys. During the flight, a lot of data is collected. We store the data in the electronic stack, but we also need to ensure that the data is kept safe during the landing in the sea because uh, we don't want the water to damage the electronics. Therefore we have two black boxes which uh, store the data and keep, keep the data safe uh, in case of a hard landing in the water. That's all for now. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for our next video blogs. In the meantime, you can follow us on Twitter, like our page on Facebook or simply go to our website there.tudelft.com. Cheers.